any questions, like Julianne said, um, like Julianne said, she will be in the chat. So if you have any questions, feel free to let her know. Again, my name is Vince. And if you have any questions, let me know as well. But we will go ahead and jump right on into the presentation. Um, and we'll get started with the CSU overview. So if you're not familiar, um, the California State University system has over 20 or 23 universities. So you can see all of those universities listed here, um, all of the different options across the state of California. The really unique thing about our campus and our system is that we all share one application system. So you can you, you can go on to CSU apply um, to submit your application for any programs at all of these institutions. Um, in this slide, as you can see, we are all over California, like I mentioned. So all the way from up north in Humboldt to down south in Southern California near San Diego. Um, so we have San Diego State, and then you can see Cal State Fullerton is in Southern California as well. And we're located um, next to Long Beach State and um, Cal Poly Pomona. One other thing to mention is that our system um, started um, uh, based off of a master plan for higher education, and that was in 1960. Um, and one third of California State's high school graduates um, attend our school. Right. We're going to go ahead and move on to our next slide. So California State University system is committed to California residents and committed to the state itself. So like I mentioned, there are a lot of students enrolled in our institutions. 94% of all of our enrolled students are actually from California. 92% of our new undergraduate transfers are from California Community College and 80 colleges and 88% of our first time first years are from California public high schools. So we do um, pride ourselves in serving um, the local students near our campuses as well as all of California. Um, and a small amount of students from outside of California. And that's nationally and internationally. All right, um, as I mentioned, internationally. So while we do serve students who come to us from other institutions uh, or from other countries, we also have um, quite a bit of opportunities for global learning. And so we have study abroad um, at some of the locations listed here. Um, but students are able to really build on their education while they're at one of our campuses. Um, they'll be able to study abroad and go across um, the world to other institutions and really um, expose themselves to new opportunities. Next up, we, have off, uh, we offer hands-on learning. This is another thing that we pride ourselves in, which is really ensuring that our students have an opportunity um, to get into the field and do the work that they're going to be doing in their careers. Um, so that's something that is pretty unique to the CSU system is that you have that opportunity for hands-on learning. And some of those areas are listed here, agriculture, desert life, STEM, biotech, um, water management, and more. All right, moving on. Um, what can you study at any of the CSUs? So not all of these majors that are listed here are at each of our campuses. However, they are at one of the campuses, at least across uh, the state. So you can see we have a wide variety of op options and opportunities available um, and some quite unique opportunities as well. So you'll see um, fire protection administration, dairy science, kinesiology, interior design, aviation, a really quite a, um, a, a plethora of opportunities available. Um, and just to mention, most of our campuses, if not all of them, also offer um, the ability to major as undeclared. So if you're not sure exactly what your major, what major you want to pursue, you also have the option to choose undeclared um, so that you can start your journey and then sort of figure out exactly what that career pathway is for you. Okay, moving on to um, some more information about finding your major. Um, so this is a site where you'll be able to really delve deeper into all of the degree programs. And Julianne, if you could please go ahead and post that link into our chat, that would be great um, so that everyone does have access to it. So it's uh, calstate.edu slash degrees. And you can see all of the different degree options we have at each of our campuses. And like on the screen um, here, you will notice that um, we might have the same degree or major concentration at multiple campuses. 
So this example shows that we have psychology at Bakersfield, Channel Islands, as well as Chico. We also have it at Cal State Fullerton. And so um, if you're thinking about psychology, what's amazing is that you can look at all of these institutions um, and you can choose from any of them because we all have the degree option. And you can see what differing resources each of them has to offer. You can see the faculty that are there um, and more information as well. So there's a lot of resources to really delve into and start thinking about what degree or what major concentration you might want to pursue if you're not sure already. Um, one thing that you may hear folks from any of the CSU speak about <clears throat> is impaction. So when we talk about impaction, what we mean is that a campus receives more application than the number of spaces that we can provide. So I'll give you an example. So Cal State Fullerton receives over 80,000 applications each year for the fall semester. Well, we can only admit, or uh, yeah, we can only admit um, about 12,000 students. So we don't necessarily have enough spaces for every single person who applies to our campus. Um, and that is why we consider ourselves an impacted school. Um, one thing to consider is that more popular majors um, will ask for more than just the minimum requirements to gain admissions. I will go over the minimum requirements shortly um, and as a part of this presentation, but just keep that in mind. If you're thinking about nursing, um, that's one of the examples that there will, there will be more information needed from you um, throughout the application process. Um, and that's because it's a highly impacted major. Right. Um, and then we do have a question, so I'll let Julianne go ahead and answer that in the chat, and then we'll refer back to it later. Okay, so more information about impacted schools. So you'll see the impacted campuses here. So we've got Cal State Fullerton, Cal State Long Beach, San Diego State, San Jose State, and Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. And then you'll see that Cal Poly Pomona um, is impacted at the freshman level only. So for, and that's local admission area taken into account. All of the other school, or all of the other schools that are listed here are impacted at all levels. And then we have the list of non-impacted schools. Um, so I'm not gonna list all of them, but I will let you um, just read through them. You can see the list that we've got. Um, essentially, these are the programs that are not impacted or the campuses that are not impacted. Okay, moving on to some of the financial pieces. So this slide breaks down what some of the costs are um, that are included when you think about a, a university. So you'll see that there are direct costs and then there's also indirect costs. So the direct costs are listed state tuition fees, campus fees, and those campus fees may vary by each campus. So or will vary by each campus. So just keep that in mind is that one campus may have a student activities fee and another campus may not have that same student activities fee. And those could be for many different reasons. Um, on campus, housing is a direct cost and a meal plan could be a direct cost. And then some of the indirect costs that are listed are books, course materials, transportation, et cetera, off-campus food and housing. This slide will show you um, sort of what amount of money you're looking at spending while you're in school um, from year to year. Um, and so the reason it's broken down separately is because the first section is living with parents. So if you were to live with family um, or parents, this is sort of what your cost might look like. If you are living in campus housing, this is what your cost could look like. And then if you're living off campus, the bottom section is what your cost can look like. The biggest piece to pay attention to is the cost of food and housing. I would say that one along with personal and miscellaneous are the two that really change because the tuition and campus fees are the same across each campus. Um, and so that's not going to change. Books and supplies will likely average out about the same. Um, and then you'll see that housing is going to cost the most if you're living on campus on your own. Um, and then living in campus housing would be the second cheapest option. And then of course the cheapest option would be living with family or parents. Um, and then you'll see that the personal and miscellaneous costs um, go up or down depending on where your housing might be. All right, next we've got this great slide that shows how affordable the CSU system is. So you can see that um, in this list, there's an average. The average is right in the middle, which is 12,451 from 2022 to 2023. And then from 2023 to 2024, 
you can see um, that it went up slightly about 2.3 percent. Well, if you look at the average cost of the Cal State system, you'll see that that we are far below that average of 12,451. We're at 7,000, just over 7,000. And so, and our also our um, percent change over year to year is much less than that average as well. So you can really see here that our campuses are affordable um, when you're thinking about the overall costs um, of other institutions um, in the nation. Um, another key thing to mention is that 61% of the CSU students receive enough grant funding to cover all tuition and campus fees, um, which is a lot of money. So if you think about that 61%, um, that's quite a few um, students who are really getting a lot of support to pay for everything that they need paid for, um, or at least for the tuition and campus fees. And then, um, of course, there's also different funding that can come from other places, scholarships, um, and other areas on campus as well. So we'll move on to the next slide here. Okay, so one program that I do want to mention. <clears throat> so if you are currently a high school student or if you are planning to go to a community college before coming to a Cal State, um, we do have something called the Transfer Success Pathway. So this is an opportunity for somebody who might not be CSU eligible um, or might not be able to attend to CSU for whatever reason that could be. It could be financial, it could be a personal reason. If you're not able to attend yet and you wanna go through the community college first and then transfer, well, this program is a great opportunity because what you will do is you will commit to an agreement with one program at one of the Cal State um, campuses. And then once you make that agreement, as long as you finish the requirements within three years, you will be guaranteed admission to that institution and to that program, excuse me, to that program. Um, so if you are thinking about community college or you know somebody who's thinking about community college, please think about this program as an option um, because there are resources that you can take advantage of um, if you do uh, sign into an agreement with one of the programs at one of the Cal State campuses. All right, so this is some information about the admissions process um, for undergraduate students. So you can see um, December 2nd is when the application closes, and that's for all of the CSUs. Um, and then moving into December and January, you'll want to really pay attention to your email because you will get emails that will be telling you to activate your portal. And so what your portal is, it's your student portal, and there's one per camp. You'll have one for all of the programs and campuses that for all the campuses that you apply to, and they will share information with you about um, any updates that are going on, any deadlines that they have, and any, and any documents that we may need from you. So it's where you will get a lot of communication and where we wanna make sure that you are staying up to date. So look out for those emails, and when you have an opportunity to create your student portal, make sure to do so, and that happens between December and January. Um, and so, like I said, it's a very important area. So make sure that you're looking at that because if there's anything missing from your application that is needed, we'll likely email you through that new email address that you're getting from your student portal. Um, from February to March, you'll see that um, you'll start receiving decisions from each campus. So whether that's admitted, denied, or waitlisted, that's when you'll start finding out um, all of that information from the programs and campuses that you apply to. And then March through April is when you'll receive your financial aid award package. Um, so look out for that information. Um, by May 1st is when you'll need to make the decision about which campus you want to go to. Um, and what I will mention is before May 1st, there are going to be so many open houses on all of the different campuses so that you have an opportunity to go to that campus, explore the resources, talk to people that are there, talk to students that are there, talk to faculty, talk to staff, and really find out, is this the right campus for you? So make sure you're on the lookout for where those, when those programs are happening. And at the end of the presentation, I'll mention um, Cal State Fullerton's open houses that are coming up as well. Um, from May through July, that's when we'll ask you to upload and send your final transcripts and any test scores that you provided in your application. Um, we want the official uh, documents for those. Um, from June through August is when new student orientation occurs on campus. So look out for information about how to register for new student orientation. And then from August to September is when the school starts. Um, so 
I know that it feels like a really long time to get to September, but it's going to go very fast. And so just do your best to pay attention to those emails because we're going to send you reminders all along the way. All right, one other program we want to mention is EOP, which is the Educational Opportunity Program. Um, this program serves uh, historically low income students as well as first generation students. If you're not sure what first generation means, that's essentially means that neither of your parents or guardians um, graduated from a four year institution from college. And so if that applies to you, then you would be considered a first generation student and you can apply to be a part of the EOP program. The EOP application is within the CSU apply application. So it's all in the same system. There's a separate section. You do not have to submit your EOP application at the same time that you submit your Cal State, uh, Cal State program applications. So you can wait, um, but I would still just recommend making sure that you're on top of it and submitting it as soon as possible um, because there are different components that you will need to include, which are um, here, which are listed here. So this is some of the information that we will ask for. Um, the ones that I want to point out are the at the bottom, which is um, the full name and email address of the email addresses of two individuals who can complete the EOP recommendation form. So that can be uh, a counselor, a teacher, just somebody that um, can really explain um, details about who you are um, and share about your um, ambition and your persistence through your education. Uh, so that's some of the materials needed. And then additionally, you will be required to submit, uh, to respond to a biographical question. And I'm going to go ahead and read the um, example, which is briefly discuss your academic background. Did you utilize any additional support at your high school, such as tutoring? Um, and do your grades in high school and or college reflect your academic ability or potential? So what we're looking at here is to really understand who are you as an individual? Did you take advantage, advantage of the resources and um, opportunities available? And if you didn't do so well while you were in school, Maybe why did that happen, or how did you do? How did you um, go along a path to do better? Um, so this is to really show us that if we give you an opportunity to be a part of EOP, that you're going to take advantage of all of the resources that come along with that, because there's so much that goes into um, what we provide to EOP students. So that's why we have this question: is to fully understand um, who you are as a student and what you'll take advantage of. Um, and I see a question, but Julianne will go ahead and answer that for us and we'll come back to it towards the end of the presentation as well. Um, so like I mentioned, the application is due December 2nd, and today is the first day that the, that the application has opened. If you haven't started, that's OK. Um, but here's the link. We'll go ahead and share that in the chat to make sure that you can see um, so that you can see all the programs and all of the um, pieces that you need to start completing. Um, and I will also mention some application workshops that we're going to be offering from Cal State Fullerton um, at the end of the presentation as well, so that if you do need help or have any questions, you can log in um, to the webinar and just chat with us and get those uh, questions responded to. All right, so that was all about the CSU system. I'm going to go ahead and transition over now into um, the Cal State Fullerton highlights. So we'll go ahead and jump right on into that. So we are the Titans. Uh, we were founded in 1957. We, in 57, we were the 12th campus established. Um, and we have right now over 330,000 alumni. So our alumni are everywhere. Um, and anywhere you go, you'll probably meet them. And then we have 18 Division I athletic teams. So we have some really competitive athletes on campus as well. We're located in Orange County, seven miles from Disneyland, six miles from the Angel Stadium and 22 miles from Los Angeles. And then um, what I will say is our mascot is an elephant and they, his name is Tuffy the Titan. So you will see Tuffy um, on campus at different events um, and hopefully we'll have a picture and I'll point him out as well. Um, at Cal State Fullerton, we have eight academic colleges. So if you're not familiar, it might sound confusing that we have some, some colleges within our college, but essentially you can think of these as broader fields of study. So an example that I can give you is that we have a nursing major and the nursing major is within the College of Health and Human Development. 
So health and human development is one of those eight colleges that has multiple majors within that college. Um, so like I said, we have eight colleges. We have over a hundred degrees and program options for you to choose from. So if you're thinking about business administration, well, we have that program, but we also have multiple concentrations um, within that one program. Um, right now we are about just over 43,000 students, um, which is quite a lot of students. We are the largest Cal State in the system. Um, and so we have a lot of students that are commuting to campus to really um, pursue their careers. Um, and I will mention we had about 452 or 59, I don't remember the exact number, when we first were established as an institution. So we went from 400 in, in 1957 to now over 43,000 students. So we really have grown um, and we have uh, plenty of resources and opportunities for all of the students that are now enrolled in our campus. Uh, I also wanna mention some of our top majors. So you will see, um, let's see, you will see um, first year majors are business administration, biological science, computer science, and kinesiology. Um, and psychology, sorry. And then for transfer majors, it's business admin, psychology, art, computer science, and kinesiology as well. Okay, so I'll go ahead and move to our next slide, um, which is just some of the rankings that we have um, as an institution. But I'm not going to list all of these, but what I will say is that we pride, pride ourselves in supporting upward mobility, first generation students. Um, and underrepresented students. And so you'll see all of that sort of um, sprinkled throughout these rankings that we um, like to boast about. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of resources available to the students on campus. Here are some of the academic and personal development resources. So you'll see we have academic advising centers um, and you can go there and talk to an advisor who knows about your program, knows about your major, and understands um, what career you might be interested in um, so that you can get all the classes that you need to complete your degree and do well in that career or even um, make sure that you're prepared for whatever comes next after um, your undergraduate time, which could be graduate school. Uh, we have a career center, so you can go and get information about um, how to interview. You can get support with your resume. Um, they have a lot of resources, not just those, um, to really help you as you think about preparing for your career. And if you're not sure what career you want, which is many students, don't worry. Um, they also can help you navigate um, how to find what career is best for you. Um, we have our Center for Internship and Community Engagement, Center for Scholars, um, college ad advising teams. We have diversity initiatives and resource centers. So um, we have different areas and centers on campus that are grouped by identity. Um, and so you can go to any of those areas and find community and find people who might be similar to you in some way um, so that you can feel belonging and feel like you're a part of campus and feel like there are people around you who understand you. Um, because what we have noticed um, is that when you feel like you belong somewhere, um, you do better all around, um, especially in your academics. And then I've already mentioned EOP, so I won't go into that one. We also have a program called Fullerton Finish, which is a program um, where you will uh, be able to take advantage of certain resources um, as long as you commit to finishing at Fullerton in four years. We also have a male success initiative. Um, so if you identify as male, um, it's a great location to go to connect with other folks who identify as male um, and really um, feel some belonging as well. And then writing and learning center. So if you need support, you can go to, the, to that center as well. Some of the career resources, or excuse me, safety and health resources listed here um, are ASI Food Pantry, Basic Needs Services. So those cover um, food, housing, um, things of that nature. Um, some basic financial supports um, sometimes can be available as well. Um, and so those, those are professional staff that are there to make sure that any basic needs you have are covered and that you can really focus on your academics. We have counseling and psychological services. So that can look like one-on-one -on -one therapy, group therapy. It could be meditation sessions, um, uh, going to one of the nap pods. If you wanna take a nap while you're in between classes, 
um, and lots of other resources that they have as well. We have disability support services. So if you happen to have, uh, if you are someone who has a disability, this is where you can get support and they would help you connect with your faculty and make sure you receive any accommodations that you may need. Um, we have a student health center, student recreation center for physical well-being. Um, we also have the university police um, on campus. And then we have a program called You at Fullerton, which is an app that you can use to help with your mental health. So there's lots of great activities on it just to really get support with your mental health. All right, let's look at some of our student life resources. So you'll see we have Associated Students Inc. If you um, are currently at a school, you may know um, student government on campus or perhaps it's ASB um, at your high school. This is essentially what Associated Students Incorporated is. It's the student government um, on our campus. So these are students who are interested in advocating for their peers, who are interested in having an impact and really supporting others while they're on campus. It's also pretty common for students who might be interested in politics um, to be involved as well um, because you are advocating and representing your peers. There are over 300 clubs and organizations, so there are plenty of opportunities to get engaged. Those clubs could range from, or clubs and organizations could range from sororities and fraternities to a club that's related to your academic major um, or a club that's related to a career path or a club that's related to a graduate school program that you might be interested in. So for example, the pre-law society. Um, so there are lots of different themes within those clubs and organizations. Uh, and they actually all go to one event, which is called Discover Fest to table and show up so that you can learn about all the different clubs and organizations. So uh, once you commit and come to campus, you'll be able to come to Discover Fest and see all of the table, um, all of the clubs and organizations. We also host lots of live performances and concerts on campus. We have the Titan Student Union, which um, is a main hub where we have a food court, we have a bowling alley, there's a Starbucks, there's a lot of really great um, activity going on in that building. And it's really a student body's um, building because um, it's all great things for you to take advantage of while you are between your academics. And then, as I mentioned, we have Division I athletics. Um, and so we have athlete um, or sporting events going on, whether that's baseball to basketball, whatever you might be interested, we likely have um, those going on. And all students are able to uh, attend athletic events for free. So if you're a student, you can go and see, maybe you know somebody that's um, playing in one of the events, um, or you can just go and watch for entertainment as well. And then the last thing that I'll mention, which is the bottom left picture on this slide, is our Arboretum. So the Arboretum is a, uh, basically I like to think of it as a huge garden, um, which is a very basic uh, way to describe it. Um, but there's a large pond um, and there are lots of trees. It's a really great escape if you just need some time away from the hustle and bustle of um, classes and everything else you have going on. And it's right on campus. So it's a five minute walk from most places where you might be on campus and you can go and just sit and relax um, and take some time for yourself. Um, there are also um, internships that are available within the Arboretum. So if you're interested in horticulture or if you're interested in um, agriculture like uh, produce, then that's um, there's opportunities for internships as well there. All right, I'll go ahead and men mention some of the housing and residential engagement opportunities on campus. Um, so housing is available. However, we wanna make sure that you understand it's not required to live on campus nor do we have enough spaces for everyone to live on campus. So there are around 1,200 spaces for first-time first-year students and 600 for transfers. And if you remember, I said we have over 43,000 students. So unfortunately, there's not enough spaces for the number of students that might want to live on campus. Um, it is competitive to get a spot, um, however, not impossible. So as you're going through the application process, like I said, you really want to pay attention to that portal um, because that's where you'll get information about the application and when you can complete it. Um, and as long as you get it in, uh, or what would be ideal is to get it in as soon as possible. As soon as you see it open, log in and submit that application. Um, there are housing or the housing that we have on campus consists of apartments, residence halls, suites, 
dining facilities and also a community center. Um, and then there will be a pre-application that opens in April. And this is essentially an opportunity for you to log in and know all of the details that you will have to submit and start working on that application so that when you're ready to submit it and when it opens in May, in early May, then you can submit it and you have all the information that you needed from the beginning uh, and ahead of time. Anything else? Um, if you were to look at our website and the housing website specifically, you will be able to see that there are some resources for off-campus living. And so if you don't end up getting a spot um, on campus, there's some resources to help you find um, off-campus living as well. Uh, there's a question about whether freshmen have priority housing. So we, we don't necessarily consider it priority, but we will say that we allocate 1,200 spaces for first years and then 600 for transfers. Um, and so the priority really goes to whoever submits it early um, for those first year um, students, it'll be the 1200 spaces. So it's separate from the um, other students, yeah. Okay, moving on to some more information about campus, which is something I mentioned briefly earlier, study abroad. Um, if you wanna learn more about study abroad, you can go to this QR code, but what you will often hear many students say is that they regret not taking advantage of study abroad. And so we just wanted to really highlight that Cal State Fullerton has that opportunity for you and that there are over 40 countries as options, over 128 city options, over six continent options that you can choose from. And we also have an internship that's in Washington DC that you can take advantage of. Um, and so just keep that in mind as you consider Cal State Fullerton one thing to also consider is that you can use financial aid towards your study abroad, um, and it will depend on the program, the cost, and all of those details. So you want to make sure to get started early as you think about that. And then the other thing to remember is that uh, most, if not all, of these study abroad programs, you'll be able to get CSU credit for the courses that you're taking while you are abroad. Um, so it's still going to count towards your program and your major and fulfilling all of the requirements needed to graduate. All right, here's some locations where graduates of Cal State Fullerton work. So you'll see Tesla, Boeing, Disney, NASA, Honda, Pepsi, all of these different locations. And this is not an all-inclusive list at all. Um, like I mentioned, there are over 330,000 alumni of Cal State Fullerton. And so they don't all just work at these um, companies listed. They are all over the, uh, the state as well as the country and internationally. All right, so here's some information about getting admitted into um, Cal State Fullerton. And these are, so these are the admissions requirements for first year students. You'll need a high school diploma. You'll need to complete 15 units of the A through G pattern with a C minus or higher. A through Gs are listed over to the right of the slide. Um, you'll need to meet a minimum qualifying GPA, earn a qualifying multi-factor admission score, which I'll go over momentarily. And then also um, one thing to keep in mind is there are additional requirements for some of the programs and some of, and those are listed here. So computer engineering, dance, music, nursing, and theater. Um, so those are um, programs where there are additional requirements for you to apply and to get admitted. Um, like I mentioned, there's a multi-factor admission score. So when we are considering who to admit into campus, these are um, the these are the factors that we are considering. So we look at the overall GPA of the A through G courses. So that's just of the A through G courses. We're not looking at all of your courses that you're taking in high school. We're only looking at this, those courses that qualify for your A through G. Um, we are also looking at your a through G English GPA and your A through G math GPA. Um, so keep that in mind. And then we'll look at additional courses as well that you might have that are qualify as A through G. Um, if we consider whether your school is a partner school of our campus, um, and you can find more information at the QR code on the right. And then there's some other attributes that we will consider as well. So for whether you're first generation, if you um, receive or are a recipient of free and reduced school lunch or have been, um, and then if you um, are or have been within youth services. One really great thing that um, 
for most people that are applying, a lot of folks that are applying to our school, um, is that if you are local to Cal State Fullerton, which are the areas listed here, um, then you have, um, then you're prioritized among the applicants um, and you receive a small benefit um, to getting into Cal State Fullerton if you're in one of these school districts. Some other details just to mention about first time first year students getting admitted is that we had a total of 53 applications, um, 48,000, 53,000 applications, 48,000 of those applications um, and those students were admitted. So there's a 90% admission rate. Um, and then we also have an average GPA of 3.45 for those who enrolled in courses. And that was as of August, 2024. All right, here's some of the admissions requirements for transfer students. Um, so you'll have to have completed 60 semester or 90 quarter transferable units, um, 30 of which are general education courses. We do ask that you completed with a C or better the golden four, which are oral communication, written communication, critical thinking, math and quantitative reasoning. Um, you have to have earned a qualifying GPA. You should be in good standing um, at the last college or university that you attended. And then similar to first year students, there are additional requirements for some of the programs listed here. Okay, and then here's some other stats about local area for transfer. So essentially, if you are at one of the Orange County Community Colleges, you are considered a local um, area transfer student and there is a um, that you'll be prioritized as one of the applicants. Um, and then here's some information about the total applications that we received, which was 21,000. Um, we admitted 16,000 students, um, transfer students. Um, the admission rate was 77%. Um, 4,000 of those admitted students are enrolled as Titans today. Um, and then you can see that the average GPA is a 3.29 of those transfer students. All right, so we're gonna move into some information about financial resources. So you'll see scholarships, grants, loans, and federal work study. So underneath this first scholarship resources, you've probably seen many of these as already, um, but here's a few different places where you can look for scholarships. And then the next two boxes are FAFSA and the California Dream Act. Um, so if you are looking for federal aid or um, state aid, um, then you can look at those options. All right, moving into some of the unique scholarships that we have at Cal State Fullerton. Um, so we have a Brago Future Scholars, which is for underrepresented first generation students. We have Guardian Scholars, which is for students who have or are a part of the foster system, have been a part or are a part of the foster system. And then we have President Scholars, which is a merit-based scholarship. Um, so GPA is what they're looking at. And then there's some other scholarships listed as well. The Alumni Association offers scholarships. So even though you may not think, oh, I'm not an alumni, I don't, I shouldn't qualify for a scholarship. Well, they are offering scholarships to students. Um, so not, not to the folks who are already alumni necessarily. Um, and then there are other scholarships that you can get from Cal State Fullerton. Um, and then we have the um, TELACU and CSUF Partnership Scholarship. And then there are scholarships for um, veterans as well. Um, and you can find all of that information at the new scholarship office that we have. Um, and the link and QR code are there. And then I'll see, Julianne, if you can put those links in the chat, that would be very helpful um, so that they have access to it later. Um, here's information that I've already mentioned, which is the Cal State Apply application is open from October 1st through December 2nd. So today is the first day that it's open. Um, and this is the link where you can apply. Um, underneath the link, you'll see that there's different um, different um, tools on the website that you can use for choosing a campus, choosing a degree, um, information about getting into the system, and then also um, more financial resources as well. And Julianne just posted that link. Okay, now some um, exciting things that we have to offer at Cal State Fullerton. So if you haven't visited our campus already, we would love for you to come and see what it's like to be on campus, whether it fits with um, what you're comfortable with and what you're thinking of yourself as, or how you think of yourself as a student. Um, so at this link, you can find information about daily tours, group tours, Spanish tours, tours that are on Saturday, 
self-guided tours as well as virtual tours. Uh, and then one really exciting thing that we have coming up in November, um, or in spring, I'm sorry, is something called the College Tour. So on Amazon Prime, we um, there's a series called the College Tour TV, and they will be um, premiering an episode on Cal State Fullerton. So if you don't have time to visit us, which we really hope that you do, then you can also check out this, um, this TV episode that will be on Amazon Prime so you can see all that we have to offer. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to other um, opportunities and things that we have available. Um, so today is the first day that we have a webinar uh, within the webinar series. So you'll see that on 10.1 today. And then you'll see um, in orange some of those workshops that I mentioned for applying. Um, so if you need help or if you have a question, you can log into those workshops to get some support. And then there's other pro, um, other workshops and webinars that we have as well. So if you're a transfer student and you want to know more about what it's like to be a transfer student on campus, um, please come or please join us on 10-8. Uh, we will have uh, the Transfer Adult Reentry Parenting and Pregnant Student Support Center present on what it means to be a transfer student on campus. On 1024, somebody from the nursing program will present about the different pathways that we have for nursing. Um, on 11-5, we're going to have somebody who works uh, with students who identify as undeclared or who are in undeclared major. Um, they're going to talk about uh, the different opportunities um, and ways that you can figure out which major is best for you. We have some more information about financial aid and scholarships on 11-12 and then on 11-19. Um, we have somebody speaking on students club about student clubs, sororities, and fraternities. So please join us throughout those um, workshops and you can get more information. And then the other event that I want to mention is Fall in Love with Cal State Fullerton. So this is an open house style event that we have on October 26th. It's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on a Saturday. And there it's free for anybody to attend and it's open to all admitted students friends, all prospective students, anybody who wants to explore our campus, welcome to join us on this day. All we ask is that you RSVP through the QR code that is there um, so that we know you're coming and we can prepare for all the folks that are want to see what we have to offer. Um, during that day, um, I see that somebody did ask about presentations on the engineering college. So during that day, we will have the engineering and computer, sci computer, and computer science college um, available um, to, to speak to folks. So there will be somebody who can talk to you about the programs that they have to offer and all of that great information. Um, we don't have a specific webinar as Julianne mentioned um, for the College of Engineering and Computer Science. Um, but there will be people on campus that day who should be able to get you some more information. Um, so the colleges will be out, we'll have food, the uh, Titan, um, Titan Bowling and Billiards will be open, and all the uh, many of the resources that I mentioned will be out tabling as well. Okay, so here's some important contact information that you may be looking for. So if you want to take a screenshot of this or a picture of this um, page, feel free to do so. Um, but essentially, we've got the orientation email, housing information, campus tours, um, transfer services, financial aid, and admissions. Um, admissions does have an admissions help desk and so essentially you would log in submit your ticket and then they would get back to you with a response um, as soon as they're able to and then going into our last slide which is how to contact our department um, that information is in the center of the slide so you can see our email address outreach at fullerton.edu you can see our website is fullerton.edu forward slash or um, and then you can see ways to connect with us on YouTube as well as Instagram. We will be posting this uh, webinar onto YouTube. So that's the location where you will be able to find it. <laughs> I just saw the question in the chat, Elijah. So look out for that. Look for, look out for it on YouTube. Subscribe, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can uh, make sure to see it when it comes available. And then we'll also post more information about the webinars and other things that we have going on um on our instagram account as well which is csuf outreach uh, if you have feedback about this presentation if there was information that you would have loved to have heard um please feel free to submit that form so that we can do better um, in the future and make sure that we're getting the information needed to students 
um, to prospective students and their families and, uh, and parents and such. And then lastly, if you're interested in Cal State Fullerton, we have this QR code on the left-hand side. And this is essentially an interest card to tell us that you're interested in our campus. And so we will make sure to send you information based off of what you um, respond to in the interest card. Um, and we'll send that to you as time goes so that you can see all of the things that we have to offer. Um, and then that is the end of the presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and stop recording and then we will look at whatever other questions we have. Just one moment. <laughs>